We've seen that enantiomers are stereoisomers that are non-superimposable mirror images of each other. And a visual way of telling whether two molecules are enantiomers or not is to look for opposite configurations at all chirality centers in the molecules. We've seen that diastereomers are stereoisomers that are non-superimposable, non-mirror images of each other. And again, a visual way of looking for this would be to look for opposite configurations at one or some of the chirality centers present in your molecules. In this video, we're going to focus mostly on meso compounds. And a meso compound is a compound that has two or more chirality centers, but the whole molecule itself is achiral. Let's use uh, this dot structure here as our example to see the distinction between these different definitions. If I wanted to find chirality centers, right, I know that this is a chirality center in my molecule, and then this carbon down here is also a chirality center. So a total of two chirality centers in, in this dot structure. If I wanted to find out how many possible stereoisomers, it's two to the n, where n is the number of chirality centers in your dot structure. So this would be, uh, two to the second power, so we would expect a possible four stereoisomers for this dot structure. Let's go ahead and, and draw the four possibilities and we'll analyze them. So we'll start with uh, both OH groups coming out at us in space. Okay, so here we have both OHs coming out at us. Another possibility would be both OHs going away from us in space. So let's go ahead and draw both OHs going away from us like that. I could also have one OH coming out at me and one OH going away from me. So I'm going to go ahead and make the top OH coming out at me and the bottom OH going away from me. And then the fourth possible stereoisomer would just be the opposite of that, right? You would have the top OH going away from you and the bottom OH coming towards you like that. Let's go ahead and analyze the last two uh, stereoisomers that we drew here. So let's analyze these two right here. And let's look at the chirality centers. Right? So if I look at this chirality center on this carbon, I can see the OH is coming out at me. When I go over here, the OH is going away from me. So that's an opposite configuration at that chirality center. When I look at this chirality center, the OH is going away from me. And here, the OH is coming towards me. So I have opposite configurations at all chirality centers uh, for these two stereoisomers. And so I can go back up here and I can see that's our definition of, uh, of an enantiomer, right? Opposite configurations at, in this case, both chirality centers. So I can go ahead, I can go ahead and write that these two, right? These two are enantiomers of each other. These are enantiomers. These are non-superimposable mirror images of each other. And if you have your, your molecular model set, you can go ahead and make those, and you, and you will see you will not be able to superimpose those molecules on each other. Let's compare, let's compare these two uh, stereoisomers. And so once again, we find the chirality centers. And so if I could look at this chirality center, the OH is going away from me. Here, over here on the right, the OH is going towards me. So that's an opposite configuration at that chirality center. I go to this chirality center, the OH is going away from me. And over here, it's the same thing. The OH is also going away from me. And so I don't have an opposite configuration at all chirality centers. I only have an opposite configuration at one of my chirality centers. So when I go back up here, I can see that opposite configuration in this case, one chirality center means that these two are diastereomers of each other. Right, so I could say that those two compounds are diastereomers. Let's analyze these two stereoisomers. Okay, and once again, we'll look at the chirality centers. So I can see that at this chirality center, the OH is coming towards me. And uh, at this one, it's going away from me. So that's an opposite configuration. This chirality center, the OH is coming towards me, and at this one, it's going away from me. So I have an opposite configuration at that chirality center, too. So you might expect that these two would be enantiomers of each other, right? Because there's opposite configurations at both chirality centers. However, if you take this molecule over here on the right, and you flip it over so the OHs are coming towards you now, you will be able to superimpose that molecule with this dot structure over here on the left. And so it's actually the exact same molecule. So these two actually represent the exact same molecule. Since we are able to superimpose the mirror image upon, upon the original molecule over here on the left, that means this is an achiral molecule. So this is achiral. And it still has chirality centers, right? So if we go back up here to our definition for a meso compound, a meso compound is a compound that has two or more chirality centers, but the whole molecule is achiral. And since you can superimpose uh, this molecule on the right with the molecule 
molecule on the left. This is an achiral molecule. This is meso compound. So this would be a meso compound. And these two represent the exact same molecule here. And so we thought that we would get four stereoisomers. But since these two are identical, these represent the exact same molecule, we can only get a total of three. So one way to tell whether a compound is meso or not would be to draw the, draw the mirror image and to superimpose the mirror image upon the original molecule. And if you can, then the molecule is achiral and you have a meso compound. Another way of figuring out whether something is meso is to look for what's called a plane of symmetry. And so if I go ahead and uh, on this compound, I'll go ahead and draw a plane here. And on either side of this plane, you can see that we have symmetry. Right? So if you can draw a plane of symmetry, that means that the molecule is achiral. And it's a quick test for a meso compound as well. All right, let's do another example to see the difference between these definitions. And let's look at this dot structure right here at the top. And locating my chirality centers, right? This is a chirality center. And this is a chirality center. So it's just like the previous example. We would expect a total of four stereoisomers. And here I have the skeletons sketched in here. Let's go ahead and, and draw in our OH and our hydrogen so we can see the different possibilities for our stereoisomers here. So I'm going to go ahead on this one and say that the OH at this chirality center right here is coming out at me. And then that must mean a hydrogen is going away from me. And so I'll go ahead and say that this is going to be a hydrogen coming out me, and this is going to be an OH going away from me. So that's, that's one of the possibilities, right? If I wanted to draw what I think is the enantiomer to that compound, all I have to do is invert all chirality centers. And so since for this, uh, for this chirality center over here, I had the OH coming out at me, now I'm going to put the OH going away from me and the hydrogen coming out at me. So I've inverted the configuration at that chirality center. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same at the other chirality center. So on the left, I had a hydrogen coming out at me. So on the right, I'm going to have, I'm going to have an OH come out, coming out at me and a hydrogen going away from me like that. All right, down here, I could have uh, I could have both OHs coming out at me, right? So this is another possible one. I could have both OHs coming out at me and then both hydrogens going away from me. And so that's another possible stereoisomer. If I want to draw what I think is the enantiomer to this stereoisomer, I have to invert all chirality centers. So I'm going to go ahead and put both OHs going away from me this time, and therefore both hydrogens will be coming out at me in space. And so these are my, my four possible stereoisomers. And let's analyze them a little bit more to see the relationships a little bit better. If I, if I look at this molecule over here on the left, so I'm focusing in on, on this guy right now, um, I know that sigma bonds allow for free rotation. So I could actually rotate this molecule around this sigma bond. So let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. So if I rotate around that sigma bond, I'm actually going to keep the group on the left the same, and so I'm going to be rotating this group over here on the right. So let's see if we can draw the results. So I would have my carboxylic acid still there. The OH would still be coming out at me in space, right? The OH would still be coming out at me in space, and this hydrogen would still be going away from me in space. So the left side of the molecule stays the same. I'm rotating the right side of the molecule, and I'm going to do so to put the carboxylic acid up here at the top. So again, this is best done with a molecular model set. And when you do that, you will see that this OH is now coming out at you in space like that. And so this these two, this is the same molecule, we've just rotated around the sigma bond. But when you do that rotation, it's much easier to see a plane of symmetry, right? So if I go ahead and draw a plane in here, you can see we have symmetry on both sides of that plane. So this compound is achiral, and, and it's meso, right? It has two chirality centers, it has a plane of symmetry, so this is a meso compound, right? So the fast way of doing it is to draw, is to draw the plane of symmetry, so this is meso, which means this is achiral which means the mirror image should be superimposable upon it. So this, this compound over here on the right, we thought that was a different stereoisomer, but you can actually rotate it uh, so it is superimposable upon this, upon this molecule on the left. So these are the exact same molecule, right? This is, all, this is all the same molecule here. So three different ways to draw the same molecule. And so this is only one possible stereoisomer. Again, the ultimate test for meso would be to take, to take this compound over here on the right, so make it with your molecular model set and rotate it, and you can see that you can superimpose it upon this stereoisomer on the left, so they're the exact same molecule. 
If I go down here to, uh, to, to this one, right, so now we're down here on the bottom left looking at this molecule. If I try that same trick, right, if I try to rotate around this sigma bond, right, if I try to rotate around that sigma bond, let's see what we get. So if I wanted to draw the resulting, the resulting um, confirmation, let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, rotate the group on the right again. So we'd keep this group over here on the left the same, right? So the OH is still coming out at me. This hydrogen is still going away from me in space. And I rotate it so that my carboxylic acid is up here at the top. Again, when you do this with your molecular model set, you will see now that the hydrogen is coming out at you and the OH is going away from you. So if you drew a plane in there, there's no symmetry. There's no symmetry. And so this compound, um, this compound is not meso. This is a chiral compound. And and, and therefore it will have a mirror image. And so, and so this compound over here on the right, right, is the enantiomer to the molecule on the left. So let's go ahead and circle some of these relationships here. This, this compound right here and this compound right here are enantiomers to each other. They are non-superimposable mirror images. You can't find a plane of symmetry. Whereas this top example here, right, the mirror image is superimposable, and so that compound is meso. And so we have only a total of three stereoisomers for this dot structure.